Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Meat Cranium. What I'm gonna be doing for you this week is I'm gonna be going back to the eye round roast steaks. So these are really tough steaks, and uh, two weeks ago, I did five different steaks uh, with five different marinades, and I did them a different way to see what was the best kind of tenderizer. I did, a, I did salt, I did uh, uh, tenderizing powder, I did papaya, I did lemon juice, and I did Coca-Cola. Well, uh, through the whole test, through all five of those, salt was a clear winner. And then last week, um, and by the way, go watch my video last week and tell me, did I get those steaks mixed up? Did I get the one and seven day mixed up during the taste test? I may have. So, if you think I might have messed up when I did that a taste test and I kind of got them flipped around, let me know in the comment section. I think I did. It just, uh, which, hey, you know, it, it's okay. So whatever I said for the one is gonna be completely opposite of the other. So I had a lot of people in that first test that I did with the eye round steaks. They were like, you didn't try, you know, pineapple juice. So I have some 100% pineapple juice here. I'm gonna be doing one steak in. And then the other steak, I'm gonna be doing some hard course kosher salt. I'm not gonna be going uh, 24 hours, I'm also not gonna be going one week. Today's Wednesday, I'll be doing this on Saturday, so it's gonna be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so it's gonna be a three day, a three day brine, or whatever you wanna call it, dry brine for one steak, and then a wet brine and pineapple juice for the other. And I'm gonna cook these up the same way I did those bone-in ribeyes last week. So anyhow, let's get these things seasoned and marinated and get them in the fridge, and I'll see y'all on Saturday. All right, so here we go. These are both one and a half inch thick. Right here, it's one and a half inch thick. And uh, let's get started on this one. You're gonna do a lot of kosher salt. Just cover that sucker. There we go. Try to get this, keep the salt off this one right here. All right, there we go. All right, get the salt off that one. Pat this in, a little more kosher salt. Go heavy on the on the salt, real heavy. There we go. All right, so that's that. So what I do with this one, I'm just gonna put this one in a nice uh, glass dish and put that in the fridge. And then this one over here is gonna be going inside a, another bag it has snow and winter on it. All right, so let's uh, get started on that. Put that in the bag. There we go. See uh, some Liddy's 100% pineapple juice. Pour that in the bag. There we go. Pineapple juice and salt dry brine. And what I'll do every every day is I'm just gonna flip this over to make sure it has full coverage of the pineapple juice in here. All right. So let's get, I'm gonna go ahead, put this in the fridge. I'll see y'all in three days. All right, y'all, so this is day three. Um, now, I just recently took the steaks, literally like about five minutes ago, I took them out, I rinsed them all off, rinsed the pineapple juice off, I rinsed the salt off the steaks, and this is what they look like. Now this right here, uh, by the way, they look, they're completely, totally opposite. So this is the salt brined one. I did a dry brine, salt, uh, top round, I think is what this is. Um, it's hard, it's like, it's really hard to the touch kind of firm, kind of stiff. I'm really surprised. I think because there's not a whole lot of fat in here that it's not very pliable. It's almost like, it's like a rock. It's super hard. Uh, now the pineapple juice one, this one is almost falling apart. Look at this, if I bend it, look at that. Super soft, it's like, it's like a freaking pillow. Look at that. This thing is like a pillow. Smells like pineapple juice, even though I rinsed it off, it still smells like pineapple juice. This here has no smell to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the same thing I did last week with the ribeyes. I'm gonna go and um, get the uh, Weber kettle and get some coals in there, some hot coals. I'm gonna sear these off first. I'm gonna treat them with some uh, oil and some salt. I'm gonna sear them off first and then I'm gonna slowly bring them up the temperature to a nice 120, 125 inch. Here we start with some avocado oil on here. There we go. And you can even see as I'm moving it, this here moves not at all. This is like nice and it's beautiful. That pineapple juice really uh, did a good job at loosening it up. But how is it gonna finish in the end?
All right, y'all, it's the same setup as last week. The ring out of my barrel house cooker. Coals on one side. I'm gonna sear them first, and then I'm gonna move them over, eh, then I'm gonna move them over here to the cool side. Great, out of my expert grill. And uh, I like it because it's small and it lays right on top of here. And Weber has a grill spray that I really like that I've been using. For, it's for non-stick grilling and it's non-flammable. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the surface right here. Look at that, non-flammable. That's pretty cool. All right, just gonna wait a couple minutes and then uh, get these uh, get these uh, steaks on there. All right, let's get these things on. It's been about 10 minutes, so make sure these are nice and hot. Now here goes the salt one. Now keep an eye where I place these so I don't put them in the wrong spot. I get them confused, all right? So the salt is gonna go right here. Pineapple right here. One minute. One minute, and then I'm gonna turn them. All right, let's turn these. All right, let's go one more minute. All right, let's flip these bad boys over. Oh my gosh, look at that salt one. That looks terrible. <laughs> that looks terrible. Oh my goodness. There's absolutely no sear going on to the, the salt one. It is hard as stiff as a board. All right, so let's turn these. So far, pineapple is uh, is winning this bad boy. That salt brine one, that looks absolutely undelectable. It looks terrible. All right, it's been a minute. Let's move these over. It looks like, not bad. Let's see if this one looks, nope. Looks terrible still. All right, I'm gonna pull these when it hits a 120, 125 in the middle. Right now they are both uh, 70, you can't, probably can't see that, 73 and 75 internally. All right, y'all, so the salt steak got, was done first. I pulled it at 122, and it's about five minutes later, but I wanna show you what this uh, pineapple looks like. Look at all that juice that is pulled up there. The salt steak was not like that. That is, look at that. That's, look at all that juice on the surface of that. That is pretty damn impressive. But yeah, it's about to come off too. Uh, just hit 120, I'm gonna let it come to 122, and I'm pulling this one as well. Salt, pineapple. All right, so here we go. Let's cut these things open. Now you can see there's absolutely no juice and no moisture on the outside of the salt one. Oh, but it's squeezing out juice. Look at that. There we go. Finally got a nice rare, medium rare there. That's pretty promising. It cuts uh, kind of tough. There we go. Here we go. That's what that looks like, right there. And now comes time for the uh, the one I'm I'm lo most looking forward to. So we have the pineapple cuts. I mean that cuts absolutely like butter. Uh, it is uh, somewhat pink, but I think that the, uh, the the pineapple juice changed the color of the meat. But that would still be considered. Uh, I pulled them all at the same time, so that'd be a rare, medium rare right there as well. Cuts like absolute butter. There you go. And that's what that looks like right there. All right, y'all, let's give this a shot. So here is the three-day dry salt brine on a non-fatty, cheap cut of steak. Wow, I can't bite through it. I'm gonna try to cut a different piece. <laughs> that sucker is tough. Oh. I'm definitely not gonna get these confused. This one's definitely salty. Woo, damn, it's dry and it's tough. That is uh, almost undelectable. Here's what I did the other one. Yeah, it's a piece of grizzle right there. <laughs> I can't bite through that one. Here's the pineapple, let's try this one. 
Yeah, that's a lot better. All right, y'all, so this is my result. The pineapple clearly wins this one. Uh, the pineapple broke it down more, um, added moisture to it. It was softer. It was nothing like a filet mignon steak or like a ribeye, nowhere as close. However, compared to a salt, dry salt brine steak that has no fat in it, it was really no, no comparison. The salt one was absolutely undelectable. It was disgusting. And uh, yeah, if you have a cheap steak that has hardly any fat, don't use salt. Use pineapple. Pineapple wins clearly. And actually, uh, you can actually taste a little bit of pineapple. It's kind of a nice, uh, delectable type of uh, type of taste. Um, I've done this before. Um, I love using pineapple juice with pork. It works. Fan pineapple works fantastic with pork. I've done steak one other time. It was just like a 24-hour thing, and it came out pretty good. This was for three days. It really did soften up that meat. You've seen it. The the salt one was stiff like a board. Still dripping juice. So anyhow, clear winner. Pineapple for the win. And my last video, let me know, do you think that I mixed the steaks up? I think I may have now, and I did this test. I think the salty one was the one week, and the beefy flavor one was the, was the, uh, was the one day. So I think I might have screwed that last video up, but it's still a good video. Uh, just uh, kind of at the end, I kind of switched things around. I kind of got things confused, evidently. Anyhow, like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Maybe. Ciao.